Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So, in the telling of my story, I've done all the research. But because I've done so much research, I find it very difficult to express the actual work I've done and actually show you the actual facts and the actual evidence because I have so much of it and it actually involves a lot of people and it and it takes place over a long period of time. So try and always to find just different little ways to get the people to start doing their own little investigation just to start thinking about it. So in my Michael Jackson story, like if let's just say it's just a story and I'm I created a conspiracy, right? But let's just say it's just for fun. Let's okay, now I'm totally serious about this and all and everything. But there's ways in which ways you can start your own research. And my story, one of the things I've always said about it, it's fun. Even if my story's not true, people that are Michael Jackson fans or Diana Ross fans, fans of Motown and stuff like that, they should be really interested in my story because it's actually really fun. Even if it's not true, it's just a really cool story. And so that's what I'm kind of trying to get people to do also. I'm just, just start thinking about it and look at it within what you know and see how it develops through your own personal knowledge, you know? But you have to start from the beginning. You have to give it a real chance. So this is what I'm trying to express. If I can get you, we need to trust that the beginning of what I'm saying and the beginning of what the Motown story is the same. So the story of how that starts is that Smokey Robinson has his band, okay? I think they're the Matadors, but we're gonna call them the Miracles, okay? So he's got his band. He goes in for an audition at the record studio called Brunswick. Okay, because Brunswick is the record label where Jackie Wilson, Jackie Wilson is a star. Smokey Robinson's favorite artist is Jackie Wilson. So when Smokey Robinson went to go get his record contract, his first, his first real attempt, he goes to Brunswick record studios okay so when he goes in there though he's not 18 yet he's just a little younger than that he's got his band and he's writing his own songs and he did his audition he did a few songs and but what happened was he was still like green as they would they would call him you're green yeah maybe you're a greenhorn like how they talk so you're not a professional yet okay but while this is occurring that does the audition see this is just total facts now this is occurring in august of 1957 these are the facts you just if you don't know the facts just you just need to trust me that this is the actual facts so without me having to show you just give me a little bit of trust to to say that this is the actual facts of the case your honor in August of 1957 the Smokey Robinson and the Miracles go for an audition at Brunswick Studios where they perform a few of their original songs where because Jackie Wilson's on that label but they're turned down they're turned down by the Brunswick people. They're not offered a contract, nothing, okay? But in the studio at that time is a songwriter named Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy is actually a songwriter for Jackie Wilson. He's actually the guy writing the songs. One of the main guys writing the songs for Jackie Wilson is Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy's actually in the record studio at the time when Smokey Robinson comes in. Now, if this chance meeting here, this occurrence here does not happen, you know, it's, this is the thing. It all revolves around this chance meeting and occurrence. Smokey Robinson just so happened to meet Barry Gordy. And the Brunswick guy turned down the offer. He had an offer to work with Smokey, okay? So if he had worked with him, then that stops everything too. But so when he turned him down, Barry Gordy walks out of the studio on his own, goes after Smokey Robinson, and he goes and introduces, the story they tell is he goes up and first he's like, hey, 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 you know, and at first Smokey's like, who's this guy, right? What do you want, what do you want? First he's like that. And then Barry Gordy's like, no, no, hey. He says, hi, I'm Barry Gordy. And then Smokey Robinson knew the name. He had never met Barry Gordy, but he knew his name because he was a fan of Jackie Wilson and he knew that Barry Gordy was a guy writing the song. So this is how it happened. So <laughs> he says, no, no, I'm Barry Gordy. And Smokey Robinson says, you're Barry Gordy? You writing the songs for Jackie Wilson? And he says, yeah, yeah, I'm Barry Gordy. So that's how they meet, okay? 
and then see right there, they have a, they instantly both have a respect for each other. Smokey Robinson's favorite artist is Jackie Wilson, and he knows that Barry Gordy's writing the songs. Smokey Robinson's trying to be a songwriter, okay? When he meets the guy, so he went for the audition, he got turned down, but who comes after him and says, hi, it's Barry Gordy, the guy that he knows, I mean, so this is how it happened. So he instantly was like, oh, well, you're Barry Gordy. He respects, he knows who Barry Gordy is. Now, Barry Gordy, if he ran out of the place and went after him and said, hey, I think you're pretty good. Now, Barry Gordy's instantly got respect for this guy, too. They have respect because Smokey Robinson's young and he's writing songs. And so now when uh, Barry Gordy who's like about 10 years older and now he's been a pro in the business, when he's gonna give Smokey Robinson advice, Smokey's gonna listen to him. And that's how it happened. That's how Motown all got created. That's all factual, all proven documents and everything. But now here's where the Michael Jackson thing comes into play. When Smokey Robinson goes back to his house. One of the people that's hanging around, because it's actually a childhood friend, a neighborhood friend of his, is Diana Ross. But Smokey Robinson has a cousin named Sharon, and I believe Sharon lives in the house with Smokey, or she's also around that house a lot. There's also another person. It's not just Smokey. Smokey has a cousin named Sharon who's best friends with Diana Ross. And because of that, it enables Diana Ross to sleep over at her friend Sharon's house, which enables her to be in the same house that Smokey Robinson is sleeping in. So at the same time, when Smokey Robinson gets hooked up with Barry Gordy, in that environment, Diana Ross is right there, and she's not only right there, she's actually sleeping in the same house as Smokey Robinson because she would sleep over at her friend Sharon's house. This is all proven, all factual, all documented. So what I'm saying occurred is that Smokey Robinson, at that time, he's dating Claudette, okay? So Diana Ross can't try and be Smokey's girlfriend. Claudette's already Smokey's girlfriend, and she's in his band, okay? So Diana Ross can't be Smokey Robinson's girlfriend. That cannot happen. But when you go much later on, I've showed where Diana Ross is on the Arsenio Hall show. It's like around 1989 or something. And Diana Ross tells this whole story about her first real love and that it's Smokey Robinson. And it's like, okay, well, when you understand the realities of the dates, Smokey Robinson was in a relationship at the time when he he's with Claudette when he hooks up with Barry Gordy. This is before the Motown stuff. That's in August of 1957. Diana Ross, she's not even 14 years old at that time. Think about the simple reality. When Smokey Robinson hooks up with Barry Gordy, he's already involved with Claudette. That's his girlfriend, which he ends up marrying just like a year later. He marries her. For some reason, Diana Ross, when she's a much older woman in like 1989 on the Arsenio Hall show, she's screaming about being in love with Smokey. She's, I loved him. I really loved him. He's my first love. When did this occur? Well, when you understand the reality is that, and why would she be talking about? Why would she be uh, proclaiming this love that occurred if she's only barely 14? How much of a love affair could have really have occurred and then if she's talking about a love affair that happened when she got to Motown, now she's 18, she's with Motown. Smokey Robinson's a huge part of Motown and his band is also a big part of it, which is Claudette's in the band the whole time. So for Diana Ross to ever be talking about a relationship that she was in and being in love with Smokey Robinson, it doesn't fit. There's no reality to the real dates and the understanding of why would she ever proclaim that? Because when you understand the real dates, she's not even 14 at the time when Smokey's hooking up with Barry Gordy and, and Smokey's already got Claudette in the band. He's already dating her, becomes his wife. There's no room for Diana Ross. And if she had an affair with them when they're with Motown, is she really going to go out telling the world, oh, I'm so proud of that affair I had with Smokey Robinson while he was married to Claudette with Motown? I mean, come on. It's impossible. She's not that low class of a disgusting woman that would be telling everyone, oh, yeah, you know what? I was was banging Smokey all the time, right? When his wife was not around, I'm banging. 
come on, she's not going to be proclaiming that. That can't be what she's talking about. But she, when she's talking about being in love, what's the actual only time? It's right there at the actual time when Michael Jackson would be conceived. Now, when you look at the actual reality of the simple dates, Smokey Robinson met Barry Gordy in August of 1957. Michael Jackson is born August 29th of 1958. So basically one year from the time when Smokey Robinson meets Barry Gordy, one year after that, Michael Jackson is born. So within the few months process, right after that moment, we know that factually in history, Michael Jackson's conceived. Now, everybody's always thought that that's taken place in Indiana. It had nothing to do. That's what they all think. Nobody understands that it's this. No. What it has to do with, it was all about Smokey Robinson meeting Barry Gordy in August of 57. At that time, Diana Ross is best friends with Smokey's cousin, Sharon, and Diana Ross is literally staying the night in Smokey Robinson's house. And then later in life, Diana Ross is claiming that she was in love with Smokey Robinson, that there was a, her first love. Okay, well, now, if you just give it a chance, that's what I'm just trying to give people a chance. Just give it a chance that my story says Diana Ross got pregnant by Smokey's. Now, she couldn't be Smokey's girlfriend. Like I said, he's hooked up with Claudette. And but they're not married and they're still young. So at that one opportunity, what would this young Diana Ross have? What would her uh, ability be to hook up with Smokey? It would be to offer him sex. That's what she would have to offer him. She couldn't be trying to be like, oh, take me out. That we want to go out. She can't do that because he's already got Claudette. So it can't be that. The only way for Diana Ross to possibly get into any form of a relationship with Smokey, she's got to offer him the only thing of what she can. It's sex. It's the only thing in the world. Just think about the real world. What could she offer him to break, to get in there? Sex is what she could offer him. She's not saying, Smokey, take me out, be my girlfriend. She's like, Smokey, here's my ass. You want to bang me? Yeah, and that's how it happened. She gets pregnant. And so this is all I try to say to people is just look at the environment of what I'm saying is going on here and just give it a chance. All you have to do, don't believe anything. I, I Those are all facts, right? But when I'm saying she got pregnant, okay, now this is this is where we're speculating. I think I've got the facts to per back it up and everything. But just take it for uh, a grain of salt and just think about it as if you're, if you're thinking about a story, just for entertainment purposes. Don't think that I have, you know, you don't have to look at all my evidence, you know? And that's what I'm saying. I don't want to show you all the evidence that I do have to back everything up. I have it all. I have it all. I want you guys to kind of just, just open your eyes and think about it on your own. Start seeing the things that are there. They're there for you to see on your own. There's all kinds of things. If you can just, for a moment, give it a real chance. You have to understand of what I'm saying. If this is how it happened. That the, it's about Smokey Robinson and Barry Gordy. Diana Ross saw that happen. Smokey's hooked up with Claudette, so Diana Ross can't hook up with Smokey. She's trying to figure out how she, she offers her ass. She gets pregnant, okay? Because Smokey's young, too. You know, he could be even a virgin at that time, too. I mean, you know, not much. And so, you know, I'm sure condoms aren't randomly available easily. So they, they, get, they get pregnant. That's what happens, you know? He got her pregnant. So now we're dealing with a few months later, she's pregnant, the reality is like, hey, she's she got to tell Smokey, I'm pregnant, right? That's got to happen. She When she, oh, Smokey, I'm pregnant, I got pregnant. And then she knows it's him. It's not like she's banging all the guys in the neighborhood. She's only 14 years old. It's him. He's obviously the father. She tell, And he knows that he's the father because he knows her. He sees her all around. He knows she's not banging everybody. She's still just 14. Okay, so now you've got Smokey Robinson in the process of developing Motown with uh, Barry Gordy, okay? They, it hasn't happened yet. They haven't sold any hit records, nothing. That has not, the, Tamla has not been established. Tamla doesn't get established till 1959, right after they give Michael Jackson away. Right after they fix that problem, Tamla gets officially, uh, they officially establish Tamla in 59, because Motown's not till it's 60 or 61 when they officially do Motown, which I say the Motown developed out of the song Shop Around, which Shop Around is this telling 
of the story of uh, Diana Ross getting pregnant. It's this, it's, you know, she's the one, you know. They say, don't fall for the very first one. A, a girl's going to come a dime a dozen. You got to find one who's going to give you true loving. So when you're talking about Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson, right? Like, let's say he's going to marry her, right? And when you're talking about the context of, a, of like a motherly figure giving Smokey Robinson advice about this situation, and then they say, they end up saying, you should shop around. Because how can that little 14 year old girl really understand what love is and that they're going to be a family at that time you know and with Smokey that is you know so that's what the song shop around that's why that song it's about Smokey Robinson getting a 14 year old girl pregnant and kind of trying to figure out should I marry her what should I do that's what the song shop around is which becomes the first hit for Motown so then uh, it's not for Motown, it's for Tamla. That's the thing, the other thing I'm trying to say. Shop Around is is uh, released under the Tamla record label, okay? But then after they see the harsh, gritty reality and that the Shop Around song is the song that goes gold and sells the million records, then they change the name to Motown because then they get a more sense of, you know what, we need to be a little bit more edgy and a little bit more gritty. And they go to the Motown. That's how it all develops. And you'll see how it all develops perfectly uh, around that Diana Ross was pregnant and they abandoned the ba they they abandoned that baby that they give that kid away they write the song shop around which becomes the hit you know that then they change the name to Motown and then the rest is all history that's how it all happens if you guys can just give it a chance from the beginning that this is the story of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's story revolves around the Diana Ross, the creation of Motown. That's how the Jacksons end up back at Motown. That's why Joseph Jackson, when he saw Michael have the real talent at five years old, that's why he instantly knew at that time. See, Joseph Jackson never was taking his kids out and performing as a band. That was never occurring. It was only when Michael showed the talent, and when Michael showed the talent, then Joseph understood that this kid was given to him from Barry Gordy, because my story is much more, I'm not going to show you all things, but you have to, if you want to understand one other thing, it's that Joseph Jackson and Barry Gordy are old friends, and that's how Michael gets put into that house, okay? These are just like, without me showing you all the evidence, this is how my stories formed and stuff. And if you can understand these basic thoughts, then what I'm saying to you is you should be able to then, if you can understand the basic, the beginning, that this is how it happened in the beginning, you should be able to then see on your own. Start looking at it that this is the foundation of Michael Jackson. Now, if this is the foundation of Michael Jackson, how does this fit the Michael Jackson story that you already know? That's what I'm trying to get to people to understand. Go ahead, look at the story that you know. Think about everything that you know about Michael Jackson. But now let's put it into the context that this is Michael Jackson's real life story. Now, how does it fit all that other stuff you know? And that's what I would like you guys to just do on your own. Just do it for fun. If you don't want to believe it and you want to just do it for fun, for entertainment purposes, just have a little bit of fun and say, okay, if Michael Jackson was actually, he would be the love child of Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson. And then what happens is they've got to get rid of that kid because Barry Gordy, like I said, he's older and he's trying to start a record company. He's not going, I mean, this is the facts of the case, what I'm saying. If Smokey Robinson had got that girl, Diana Ross, she's 14 and she's in the neighborhood, right? If she, if Barry, if Smokey Robinson had got her pregnant, Right at the time, look at the actual timeline for Michael's birth, okay? Compared to when Smokey met Barry, just perfectly like how I'm saying. Let's go along that timeline from when they met in August of 57 to when Michael Jackson's born in August of 58. So you go along that timeline. This is the timeline we're going on, and they're trying to figure out things, how to work it out and, and everything, right? <clears throat> so... If you're Barry Gordy and now you've got this guy Smokey, now see he's been working with Smokey for a few months. He would have been working with him for a few months before he finds out that he gets Diana Ross pregnant, right? This is why they're they're connected. It, they were able to build up the connection before it happened. So then what happens is now they've got something they have to deal with, a reality. That Barry Gordy is like, okay, my artist that I'm going to build my record company around, you know, my young 
18 year old artist I'm gonna build I'm gonna try and build my record company which ends up becoming Motown that's the visions in his head right it's not there yet but this we can see now that that is what they built so we can have an understanding that that's what his vision was he's got an idea of what he's doing right so He's thinking, I'm going to build my record company. This is Barry Gordy. He's getting ready to make his move. He's making his move. And it's Smokey Robinson that he's making his move with. And what happens right after they start really getting into it? Diana Ross is, ends up coming over and saying, I am pregnant, Smokey. So when Smokey Robinson tells Barry Gordy, hey, Barry, there's this girl in the neighborhood, a 14-year-old girl. I've known her for years and shit, right? And he's like, I got her pregnant. She's pregnant. What, what should I do, right? So they're trying to figure out what to do. Now, if they're going to have the kid, well, that's the end of Smokey Robinson's music career because Barry Gordy, being the businessman he is, he's not going to back Smokey Robinson as an artist. Maybe he'll use him as a writer, but he can't use him now as an actual singing star. That's shot. There's no way he's going to build his company around an 18-year-old singing star who's got a child from a 14-year-old girl in the neighborhood okay that's it they're all destroyed once that story gets out especially being black you got to remember for the black people if you're going to put a negative image they have to really worry about their image their image has to be twice as clean right because they're already being looked at as they're twice as dirty shit right by the public so they got to be twice as good barry gordy knew that that was the key to the success to build motown is they they had to be better than everybody they had to be clean they had to talk properly they had to look good uh, everything their image was a big thing about the whole thing so there's no way that Barry Gordy would risk his company uh, being built around this guy having a kid from a 14 year old good 14 year old Diana Ross remember this is not Diana Ross that's in the Supremes at this time she's 14 years old she's just a little girl who's pregnant Barry Gordy's not looking at her like oh she's a great singer oh she's gonna be the Supremes that's not what happened in with Barry Gordy he's looking at her like this is a dumb girl who got pregnant that's all there is to it. He's looking at her as nothing else than that, right? But then what happens? So Barry comes up with the plan. Barry says, I've got a friend, Joseph Jackson. He's got all these kids, and he used to be in a band. He knows music and stuff, too. We could Maybe he could help train Michael, whatever, you know? Who knows exactly how that part worked? But in his head, he's thinking that Joseph is a good place for Michael to go live. We give them a little money. That's his friend. It's out of state. That's what her works, because... Joseph and Barry Gordy are old friends. Now, I could prove all that stuff when I have to go, but it's more information and all the stuff. You just have to trust me that that's how that worked, okay? And then, so that's how the deal goes down. Think about the reality of time. Michael Jackson's born August 29th of 1958, okay? So they give him away. Then, uh, like in 1959, um, Smokey Robinson, like, marries Claudette. They get married. And, um, and they released the, the Shop Around song comes out right there. It's all in 59. Also in 59 would be then when Diana Ross like turns 15, when she moves out of, after she gives the kid away in real history, when she starts to turn to 15, that's when she starts in the primettes. Now think about the reality. After she gives the kid away, she's made the deal with Smokey Robinson and Barry Gordy to give her kid away to this Jackson family so that Barry could build Motown with Smokey, right? So that Smokey can be a star. She, cause she's, And then she's thinking she screwed it up for Smokey, so she's like, okay, I'll give the kid away. We'll work this deal, right? But in her head, she's also got another thing that now she's so hooked up with Smokey and so hooked up with Barry Gordy, too. She's in, and she's made the commitment that I'm going to give up my child for you guys, okay? This is how Diana Ross becomes known as the boss. This is how she goes right to the head of the Supremes. That's why right after that, she starts dating Barry Gordy and why her first known child is fathered by Barry Gordy, Rhonda Ross Gordy. Her first known child's father is Barry Gordy because they had this connection that would all happen back in the beginning in the creation of Motown. This is why they are so close together. This is why you always hear Motown being referred to as a family. Think about the reality of what was taking place there. Then when the Jacksons come back, Michael's actually the child of Diana and Smokey. So, and then the Jacksons now is a part of Motown. And when you want to talk about like a family, like a real family, when they say it's not, it, I heard Smokey Robinson say, people think it's mythological. It's not. It's not mythological. They were a real family. This all happened. 
So it's like, just think about the story of what I'm saying, that Michael Jackson's not actually a Jackson, that he was given to them because of the affair that happened with Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson. That's the story that builds my whole foundation of who Michael Jackson is. And then when Michael Jackson gets to Motown, Diana Ross informs him of the truth. Michael, his whole life when he was a kid with the band, trying to be the Jackson 5 going to Motown, trying to make it, Michael thinks he's part of the Jackson family. He doesn't know he's not a member of the family. That whole time, he thinks he's a Jackson. And let me tell you, straight out in the world, there's a big fucking difference between the reality that this kid had to deal with when he was thinking he was doing things as a part of the family between the reality of what he had to deal with with after he gets to Motown and Diana Ross tells him the truth that he was given away as a child and that all of that stuff of how he thought he was being worked hardest for a family was actually that he was being used by Joe and Joe was really only taking care of his family which Michael actually is not a part of. Now, think about the context of everything about what you know in Michael Jackson's life, what he actually did, the real life of what he experienced, how Diana Ross is there all the time. She's such a major player and a big part of this whole thing. You just have to go back and actually, for a moment, go back and look at the actual date when Michael Jackson's conceived. And if you look at that date, you'll see how it relates back to the creation of Motown. And the creation of Motown is involving Smokey Robinson. And then his neighbor who's right there is Diana Ross, who's literally sleeping in his house at that time. I've got that all proven, all documented. Got Diana Ross claiming to be in love with Smokey Robinson at that time, which can't exist in the real world when you know the facts that Claudette's already hooked up with Smokey. That can't ever exist, but it does exist. Now, why is Diana Ross proclaiming this love to uh, Smokey Robinson? Because because in the real world, she's so proud that the child that was spawned off of that, it's Michael Jackson. Do you know how hard it is for her to sit back and not be able to proclaim that that kid with all the talent, that it, that's her kid. That's her kid and Smokey's kid. She loves that fucking kid. He's the greatest, talented, most thing ever. She thinks he's the most beautiful thing ever. She loves him, and she can't tell the world the truth. And this is what they had to live with all the time, and that's why Michael Jackson ends up being the first one dead out of all of them, because he's got the real mental issues, the real problems that cause him to be labeled as wacko jacko because nobody can understand the reality that he's not a jackson and that's where all of his problems and all of his pains lie think about the fans how can michael jackson ever actually care about the fans when the fans think he's a jackson they don't understand him they don't understand his work they don't understand his art they don't understand his life and that's why he's dead and nobody fucking cares about him ever now then at all until you start dealing with my fucking story michael jackson was a dead loser he'll always be a dead loser my story is the only thing that vindicates him and actually validates his whole entire life